Hey guys, Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant. Uh, you're on Active Self-Protection Extra, and this is your Manus Dry Fire Monday, which won't be as much dry fire because we're working on something. This is part two of a two-part video. The first one was Four Aces, part one. I'd suggest you watch that. What I'm really trying to emphasize here is the way to practice. With guided drills and real-time feedback, the Mantis Laser Academy allows you to have a training facility at home and at your convenience. Get quality reps with your own equipment and experience a higher level of dry fire training with positive results that you can see and feel. Laser Academy's variety of drill options also keeps things fresh for shooters, making practice feel more like a game and less like a chore. I use it all the time and recommend it highly. Uh, we're in deliberate practice mode to improve ourselves. All right. We're also gonna check it with performance mode to make sure that it is a true skill. Now, unfortunately, across the street, uh, there's tractors and dump trucks going on and every time they back up, they beep. So it's going to interfere a little bit with my beeper today, I'm sure. So if you uh, see me jump the gun a little bit on something, please understand this is a distracted environment. All right, let's talk about how to practice. Isolation drills are great. What's a couple isolation drills? Draw the first shot, okay? Uh, transition from one target to another. Those are things that we can break down, isolate into small parts. Combination drills, which I went to primary and secondary uh, training camps or shooting uh, summit conference thing was fantastic. Uh, and Matt Little and Riley Bowman both worked on a lot of build drills and combination drills. And I realized despite being a lifelong coach that I've been ignoring combinations in my shootings. I would never ignore it in my striking or my jujitsu, but apparently in my shooting, I've been kind of ignoring combinations. And what happens is when you keep these parts separated, then they tend to fall apart under pressure. They don't flow together the way they should, so it's really important to put a combination together. And I'm fixing that, I'm gonna teach you guys how to do it. We always wanna break it into parts, but I think a better and more eloquent word for it is elements. What are the elements of the drill we're gonna do? It's called four aces, it's two, reload two. Very common drill. Great, it's very short, very easy to do. Uh, you can do it in most places, even if you couldn't do it with a draw, you could fire two, reload two. Uh, you would be in pretty good shape with this, so it's a good, easy practice drill. Uh, ben Stager says from competition gear, you should have about a 2.6 uh, 2 seconds on this. We're gonna do it from concealment. What does concealment add? I give you a quarter second value. Uh, a lot of us in the industry give a quarter second value. Uh, Gabe White, Scott Jelinski, things like that. We know it's somewhere in that area. The concealment does slow down the process a little bit. One of the reasons that appendix carriers are getting sub-second draws is that our equipment is improved. It's incredibly important. Everybody thinks that athletes are getting better in the and running miles, but part of that, their time's getting better is we have better surfaces to run on, we have better shoes, we have better starting blocks, and we have better coaching. So that all puts you ahead. It's gonna be the same thing in shooting. I have better gear. So let's talk about my gear because you guys are always interested in it, all right? First thing is I'm using a JM Custom Kydex. Uh, they're a high ride, which means that the magazine sits about right here and the rest of the mag carry is below it, which keeps it from rolling over my belt, which is a really pro big problem for me with mag carriers. If it rolls over my belt, it's not where I need it to be. I'm using discrete carry concept clips on it. They're fantastic. Once they latch onto your belt, they never move. I am running a Filster floodlight inside of an Enigma, okay? Great thing. John Hopman said the thing that matters to me on this, he said the Enigma is a prosthetic. It actually connects to your body, not your belt. That's an important thing. I'm running the my favorite VP9, okay? Uh, this is a stock VP9 inside, but it does have a comp on the front and a light and a red dot. But otherwise, it's just standard. Uh, the trigger hasn't been changed or anything like that, so it's just a good one. We can see that it's empty. I physically and ver visually verified it. I'm gonna rack it a couple times, and then I can demonstrate the way I practice this. One of the great ways to practice efficiency is backwards, okay? So if I wanna get better at, at the reload itself, what I do is I practice it to the gun, and then I practice putting it away. And then I build my grip again. Now I am doing this with a full magazine. I am pointed at a 12 foot berm right now. So everything's good and safe, but the full magazine matters to me because it changes the weight and the way that it inserts into the gun. Okay. And I'm practicing both directions. So that's one thing that you can do. Find your efficiency backwards. Then I broke it into elements. All right. I practice with my hand already on the magazine, the gun already out. So I'm just practicing the briquette reload here, all right? Just getting to here and making sure that it lines up with the gun and then putting it away. That's a really important training methodology, here to here. This is my worst part of this drill. 
I really struggle with this drill. This is not an easy drill for me. Um, so I'm working on it hard. Next thing I would do is both hands on the gun, okay? From the buzzer or the par timer, go and get the magazine, put it in the gun. Now I'm using a stock VP9, so no magwell. Uh, you gotta insert a rectangle inside the rectangle, which is a difficult lineup. The less I move, the better it is. So as soon as I go get it, clear it, and then smoothly insert it, build the grip again. So those are the ways that I practiced it and broke it down and hopefully it yielded some results and some improvements. Now I've only had two weeks, guys. Gotta tell you as a coach, two weeks is nothing. Uh, I've been on the road, I've been to Oklahoma, I've been to Kansas for the active self-protection bull and Bibles. We've had a great time. So I have practiced, but not as much as I would like. And then I have also been teaching quite a bit. So really from the last time you saw this video to now, maybe let's say 10 good practices, all right? It's not enough to achieve a tangible result, but it is enough to become an experimental explorer of the technique. I've learned a lot about it because I'm applying myself. Now, if you say that this drill is not important, you're right, it's zero tactical value, okay? But things that I like to put in automaticity as the armed citizen, I like to have a draw, not a shot, that is automatic. I'd like to be able to clear a malfunction automatically, and I would like to do a reload without thinking about it. And that's what automaticity is. It's going to be subconscious competence. That's important to me, may not be important to you. So as we work through this, uh, this is a drill that I have to develop uh, for me because I reload constantly on the range. I would like to be good at it. And it's fun, guys. It's, you know, training should be interesting. Uh, you know, there's five elements of this. Uh, we have to have a purpose, of course, and we have to have curiosity about how we're doing it. We have to have passion for it. Uh, without passion, you'll simply fade out of this very quickly. It needs to be autonomous, and that means it's self-directed and self-replicating. You, you get rewarded for it every time you do it. It's your idea, it's your thing, so you're gonna get better at it. And the final is we're searching for mastery. And mastery is a big term, a big broad subject, all right? And it's very hard to become a master of anything. But as I explored this, I became better and better, and it made me a better teacher, all right? So I have a different idea a little bit. Curiosity brought me to a better reload position with the shirt, so I'm excited about that. All right, gotta shoot it for you guys. Now, if I'm in deliberate practice, that means I'm either in accuracy and precision or I'm speed efficiency. Can't do both at the same time, all right? Uh, it's like the old story of chasing two rabbits, you get none. So I'm either going to be accuracy and precision or speed and efficiency. Accuracy first shooters will always look at this and say you weren't accurate enough. Speed and efficiency shooters say you can go faster, all right? Right now, I'm looking for the most efficient way to do this, okay? So when I started the drill, my average was a 3.5, 3.5, five, 3.6 from concealment. I think I've cut a little bit off of that, but it's still very fragile. It is possible for me to do a better drill, but it is not probable. I'm going to bump the probability up over the next three months by practicing deeply with this and deliberately, and then it will be mine as long as I maintain it with a bit of maintenance, which is the same word over and over again. All right, so it's four aces, draw, fire two, reload, fire two. Let's see what we get. This is just the truth of the matter. This is what practice looks like. If your practice isn't slightly frustrating, you're probably not pushing very hard. You're just doing the thing that you're already good at. And the problem is if I deadlifted 350 every day and got really good at it and just stayed at that weight, I would eventually regress and injure myself because I'm checking out. As I constantly grow, I get better. And then things that were hard at one time become efficiently easy for me to do. All right, four aces. Let's see what it looks like. This is pressing in speed and efficiency mode. Let's just stop there. <laughs> so a pretty good first drill. Now I'm not cold by any stretch of the, the mind here because I've been practicing this morning because this is training. This is not walking out to the fight and what my cold skill is. And I get up and practice every day so I'm not really sure I ever, ever exist in a completely cold state. So I'm always a little warmed up. So if I hold myself to inside the big circle there, uh, I, I have all hits. I had a 94 draw which under the pressure of the camera in performance mode is pretty good for me. I had a 19 split, which is outstanding for me. And my reload uh, looks like a 
201. So there's a little time that I could get, gather off of that. And then my last split was a 19. So I had the score of 3.33, which is good. Last, last average was about 3.6. Now I've only done it once. Had a tiny fumble there, but overall it was pretty good. One thing that's really helped me is getting this and moving it straight up and going straight back to it. Let me grab my mag. Okay. So how I grip this really matters. I do not put my finger on the bullet to see if it's loaded. I simply always put loaded magazines in this mag carrier. No empties in it. If it's an empty, it goes in my pocket. So every day I check it before I leave, that way I know it's loaded. If I put my finger up here, what happens is it tends to go in the mag well and slow the whole process down. So all I'm doing is putting this away and making sure it's in place. Check my gear, make sure all the elements are there. We're good to go. We've got the timer. I'm gonna tell you guys, that's a pretty good first demo, all right? So I can push a little bit here, but we'll probably see some processing areas and combinations. Uh, there always is a bit of it, all right? What I have to do is say fully present in each action and not get ahead of myself or think about how well I just did, okay? I think I can probably shave off a little bit on the draw, maybe a tenth, and maybe if I look for, uh, I can't do anything on the splits, that's fine, that's fast enough, 19s are great for me. So the only place I can really make an improvement is in the reload. So if I can cut off, you know, point uh, two, three on that, that would be fantastic. I did have a little fumble, which is that's usually what it cost me. So let's see if we can clean it up. I'm going to visualize what I'm gonna do, but I'm also gonna visualize a kinesthetic index, which means I'm gonna feel something visually, which is a really odd statement, but you can do it. I wanna feel the magazine going into the magwell, okay? That I have control over it, that it lines up and it goes in. I wanna feel that because there's a very precise feeling. Let's see if that makes this drill better. Okay, a bit fumbly. Shirt got caught up, didn't get it cleared all the way. But here's the good news, I had a 90 draw. It wasn't my best draw, I had one out, all right? Had a 20 split. And then my reload was a 276, so that fumble cost me half a second because it was caught in my palm. So something to be really careful of is to make sure I get it cleared. Because this is a one-hand motion. So if I don't get the thumb indexed behind the shirt, I can get caught. So we're gonna try it once more, okay? But even with a mistake, it was still a four. So that's, that's, I'm pretty satisfied with that. And now I just learned something that I need to index the thumb just a little bit better as I'm coming in. All right, let's see if we can fix that up. Okay, 94 draw, 19 split. The reload was a 2.8 because I slipped on my grip. I knew I was ahead of the process. I was very excited and then I didn't form my grip, so I dropped out of the process. So we're gonna shoot this once more, okay? And see how that goes and see if I can let go just a little bit, get myself out of this position. Mess. 69 draw 21 split reload fumbled 219 so now i know in my practice i have what i have one miss on that one too so that means i pushed i pushed too hard so for me in efficiency mode outside of that coke bottle is too much i can't stand that uh, it's a 331 total okay uh, but we're seeing the same score over and over so i've really got to work on the administrative part of getting the magazine in the gun that's what i got out of this practice and I hope you get something out of it. About three months from now, it's gonna look really good. I'm gonna make this a part of my deliberate practice and I'll spend maybe five minutes on working on that part of it until I feel it really smooth out. And then I'll press it a little bit in live fire and, and keep checking my performance level and I'll be able to move. Remember to breathe while you're doing this. If you hold your breath, it slows you down, all right? And then practice in speed and efficiency mode. Now I'm gonna do one final one. This will be performance mode where I'm going to really assess my hits. I'm going to be visually patient on this and see what it looks like.
right. So you guys saw a correction in there too. That was that was outstanding because I let the dot drip, it dipped down too far, so I fixed it. Now the difference is my average was three three today, and now I'm at a three nine. Uh, my draw went to a 111. It's not my draw slowed down, but I really looked for uh, seeing the dot in the center of the target. My reload was still a 210, so that really didn't change. I went to a 2-3 split and then a 5-5 five, five as I corrected it. What I tell my students is, is, are you willing to spend a quarter second to fix whatever's wrong with your, your, your uh, sight moving? And that's what I did. I saw it drop down, so I didn't do it. So everything was good hits. So that's me performing well, okay? So there's your practice. Remember, this wasn't just performance. Uh, I'm a little upset. I ask everybody to send me their scores. I haven't heard from any of you all. I feel very lonely right now and heartbroken. So please, some people get after this. I know some of you can do this faster than I can. Uh, I, and I wanna see that. Uh, it, it's always better to provide video uh, if you of you shooting it uh, because it's cool. And let's work on this together and see if we can perform. Guys, it's really important to always measure, refine, and perform. I'm Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant. Thanks for checking us out.